Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and Muammar Gaddafi, leader of Libya, is one of the few politicians in the world I don't consider a lying, thieving crook. If our thugs want to kill this man, the least we should do is find out what he stood for. JohnTermel.com slash Gaddafi.wmv is the whole book. This is just one of the excerpts dealing with the economics how he wants to share the wealth fairly. Now, I think he's a little bit too egalitarian. So in a sense, this is almost like Muammar Gaddafi against Atlas Shrugged Not. Because Ayn Rand's John the Engineer Galt was a coward, not a hero. He's a guy who didn't like the way communism and was controlling his world. So rather than get involved in politics and fight back, he went on strike went hid out in the bush, lived with the millionaires in Shangri-La, until the sheeple overthrow the wolves and invite the men of the mind, the inventors, and all the great men like him, Johnny Engineer Galt, until they would come back and be appreciated. And, of course, Johnny Engineer Termel, I got nowhere to go hide out, so I had to take on the wolves. This is part three of my excerpts of five that, out of his book, and I hope you enjoy it. Part two, the solution to the economic problem, socialism, the economic basis of the third universal theory. Important historical developments took place in the course of attempts to solve the problem of work and wages, the relationship between employers and employees, owners and producers. These developments led to concessions which determined fixed working hours, overtime pay, leaves of absence, minimum wages, profit sharing, workers' participation in management, the prohibition of arbitrary dismissals, social security, the right to strike, and other provisions contained in almost all contemporary labor laws. Despite all these important developments in the history of economics, the deep-rooted economic problem still fundamentally exists despite all the refinements, improvements, and developments even though it's been made less severe than in past centuries and has given workers many benefits. Attempts to improve wages did not fare any better, although the end result of such attempts granted workers concessions which are guaranteed by legislation and safeguarded by trade unions. In reality, however, the economic problem still exists. Wage earners are but slaves to the masters who hire them. They are temporary slaves, and their servitude lasts as long as the duration of their work for which they receive wages from their employers, whether these are individuals or the state. The ultimate solution to this problem is to abolish the wage system, emancipate the human being enslaved by it, and revert to the natural laws based on equality among the components of economic production, the exploitation of man by man, and the possession by some individuals of wealth exceeding personal needs are manifestations of departure from the natural rule. The labor force has become a component of the production process. As a result of progress, the working force is no longer a multitude of illiterate laborers, but has transformed into a limited number of technicians, engineers, and scientists. Consequently, trade unions will disappear and be replaced by Syndicates of engineers. Well, what are they going to do for street cleaners uh, and technicians? Scientific progress is an irreversible gain for humanity. Need. The freedom of a human being is always comprised if his or her needs are controlled by another. For need may lead to the enslavement of one person by another. Furthermore, it's the cause of exploitation. Need is a real problem, and conflict is provoked as a result of one man's needs being controlled by another. So Gaddafi wants everybody's needs to be satisfied without depending on other people. <clears throat> Dictator. Housing. Private dwelling is essential for the individual and the family as well, and therefore should not be the property of another. Mm, I like that. Forget the ultimate solution that a person must own his own home. Wow. In a socialist society, it is inadmissible for anyone to control the needs of a human being, not even society itself. Quite the dictator. 
No one has the right to build a house in addition to his own dwelling or the dwellings of his heirs for the purpose of leasing it to others because a house represents a human need. To build an additional house with the intention of leasing it is to engage in manipulating the need of another human being and freedom lies at the very heart of human needs. And of course, if you allow people to all buy their own houses, nobody needs to lease. So give them all credit at the bank, no one needs to lease. So establishing Termel's interest-free banking would permit everyone to buy their own house. No one would ever need to lease unless it was for a short-term period, like a cottage for a month or something during the summer. And that means everybody owning their house, no one needing to lease. That would be the socialist solution he wants, effected by me, giving everybody interest-free loans. Well, social credit solves his socialist housing problem. Income. Income is an imperative need for every human being. And as such, it is inadmissible that any member of society should obtain his or her income either as a wage from any source or as a charitable donation from any individual or party. So he shouldn't have poor people. In a socialist society, there are no wage earners, but only partners. This income may be in the form of a share in a product in whose production a person contribute, constitutes an essential element. It should not be in the form of a wage returned for production for the benefit of any party whatsoever. So in other words, the union should buy out the owners and then everybody shares. Not a bad idea. Vehicles. A vehicle is also an essential need for the individual and the family, and as such, a person's means of transportation should not be the property of another. So everybody should own their own wheels. And you can do that with an interest-free credit system bank, too. In a socialist society with social credit, no person or party may own private means of transportation for the purpose of renting to others, because this represents controlling needs of others. Well, what if I want to have limos and rent them out to the people going once a year to a stag or something? Different story. People shouldn't have to buy their limos. You ought to be able to lease out some transportation. So, land. Land is no one's private property. Ooh, capitalists won't like that. Rather, everyone has a right to exploit it for farming or grazing for the duration of his or her life and the lives of their heirs, but within the limits of fulfilling their needs. And I guess once they fulfill their needs, if they're not using the rest of the land, I guess someone else is going to be able to buy it from them, right? The objective of the new socialist society is to establish a happy society deriving its happiness from being free, says dictator Gaddafi. <laughs> Such a society is realized only through the fulfillment of the individual's spiritual and material needs. And this can be achieved by liberating these needs from the control and manipulation of others. Satisfaction of needs should be realized without exploitation or enslavement of others, as this would be contrary to the objectives of the new socialist society. Thus, in this new society, a human being should either work for himself to secure his material needs or work for a collective-owned establishment in which he's a partner sharing in its production or join the public service to serve society, which in return would guarantee to provide for his material needs. Well, that's got to be some kind of a wage structure. Therefore, some kind of wages are allowed. Do you get credit for your extra production? That's all I want to make sure. I don't mind that after I've spent everything I want and enjoyed everything that I've earned as much as I can, that my abundance is deposited in the bank for other people to use, as long as I get credit for that score in my account. The legitimate objective of an individual's economic activity is solely the fulfillment of personal material needs, since the wealth of our world as well as that of each individual society, is finite at every stage. You just can't hog everything in the planet forever like capitalism allows. I agree. 
there's got to be a limit to how much the pig people can hog. No one individual has the right to undertake an economic activity whereby wealth exceeding his needs can be amassed. How about score exceeding my needs be amassed? Let's step off here for a minute. Jesus Christ condemned taking from the poor to give to the rich, which he defined as usury. To those who have abundance will more be given. After from those who have no abundance, you've taken it away. But in Paul Corinthians 2, chapter 8, 14, it explains what you should do with your spare seeds that the wealthy can collect more than the weak. Your abundance, my spare seeds earned, should at the present time be a supply for their want. Okay, so that later their abundant spare seeds may be a supply for my want. Okay, and in that way, he who gathers much doesn't have too much, and he who gathers little doesn't have too little, that there be equality. So Christ said that you can have equality even though he who gathers much has more than he who gathers not much, as long as whatever excess he has is available for he who gathered not much to have not too little. That's Christian economics. It's okay to have capitalism in there, to hustle and work harder and make more. And once you've spent more and enjoyed more that you've earned, your abundance is all they say that you have to lend to your neighbors, not what you have. So The excess would represent the right of others. Well, not necessarily. The excess I make would represent the right of others to an interest-free loan. Yes, not to a gift. The individual has the right to save from his needs, from his own production only, but not from the efforts of others at the expense of their needs. Fine, but again, I got a right to drive a caddy because I earned more, while the other guy's driving a little mini because he earned less, as long as we both got wheels. And that's okay, that there be equality while one has more and the other has less. If it were permissible to pursue economic activities for the purpose of making profit in excess of personal needs, I want to. Save, put away for a rainy day so I die in the positive. I'm not going to hog it. I'm going to let them use it, but I want credit for it, for scoring it, for bringing it in. Some individuals would obtain more than they need. I don't mind having a score more than I need and would then deprive others from obtaining their own needs. Not if I'm lending out my abundance to the other people. Now I'm fulfilling the commandment in Paul. Savings in excess of personal needs represents another person's share of the wealth in society. No, it doesn't. It's not his share. Yes, it's his right to participate in it, but it's my share that I'm lending to him. Like Isaiah 55 said, you are hungry, have no money, come buy and eat. I don't mind selling it to you on credit, but I'm not going to give it to you. Don't have to. To allow private production to secure savings in excess of satisfying personal needs and to permit the employment of others to secure personal needs or to obtain in excess of personal needs is the very essence of exploitation. Yes, when the pig people hog it all. Bill Gates, Rothschild, pig people hogging it till their neighbors die. But there's nothing wrong with a rich man being rich and having a lavish lifestyle as long as he doesn't loan shark his abundant seeds at usury and as long as he lends them out in turn. As we previously noted, labor in return for wages is virtually the same as enslaving a human being. Well, not completely, if it's fair wages. Come on now. It is unmotivated labor because the producer is hired hand and not a partner. Well, okay, but who in the world is going to work as a producer when they have a credit line at the bank and they can buy in for the union to own a part of the shares? So yes, by having sociable credit at the central bank, no, you, no worker needs to work for a wage unless he's not producing something then he does want a wage for his time. He who labors for a wage lacks the motivation to work. Not necessarily. 
you're getting a good wage, maybe you take pride at how good of a nurse you are, or how good of a floor you cleaned, or how good and you excelled at whatever job you did. 